Alright, so good morning. good morning. Welcome back upstairs. We're off to the start of our fall sermon series. Today's topic is entitled Social Justice. And you know, it's one of those things we always wonder where is social justice rooted in Unitarian Universalism? And I know for you veterans around here, I've done this several times, but I always like doing this. And I always like to start at the front of the hymnal, because oftentimes when we're out in the community, people always ask, what is a Unitarian Universalist? And so where is social justice rooted in our faith and practice. Well, as a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association, we affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another, and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of consciousness and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, and respect for the interdependent will of all existence, of which we are a part. Our entire existence is rooted in social justice and we find this simply by reading our seven principles and lighting our chalice at the start of each service. The flaming chalice, a beacon of hope in our search for justice with origins in World War II and our efforts to help with the Nazi resistance and assisting Jews fleeing Germany. Originally, it was said that the chalice itself came to be used as a symbol on paper to help solidify and validate documents helping to get Jews out of Germany. And only in more recent years, and by recent I mean like, you know, starting in the 1960s, then into the 1980s, did it become more of a standard symbol in the Unitarian Universalist faith. And it was actually brought about to primary use by our UU children and some of their practices in working on symbols that took a three-dimensional shape. Every time I do a sermon here, I always learn something new. So for us locally here in Sioux City, what does social justice mean as Unitarian Universalists, and what does that mean for our greater community? We only have to look back to 1885. Our church was started in Sioux City in 1885 by a woman. That right there tells you that with a female minister, we are rooted in social justice. The times were different, they were difficult, and women didn't even have the right to vote. But a woman was who helped form this congregation. Further, we just look at the work that we do on a daily basis. We live our faith. We host many community organizations within the grounds of our building. The Tri-State Suicide Prevention Coalition, Grandparents Raising Grandchildren, the National Organization of Women, the Northwest Iowa Chapter of the Sierra Club, the Siouxland Pride Alliance, and members of the Siouxland Community Health Center. We have to look at our daily actions and know that we are not just people of words, but people of action, social justice-related action. And that is something that we should be proud of and happy about. We reflect it in our daily actions. One thing that came to mind as I was working on today's service was our church house. Many of you remember a few years ago, we had discussions about what the future of our church house would be. We were in a difficult time. We knew that something had to be done, but we weren't sure what. The space wasn't being used as effectively as it could have been, and we were looking for options. Some of the topics that came up would be, would we tear it down and build a new structure? Would we renovate it? Was there really a point of having that structure? Could we just tear it down and consolidate our current activities into the sanctuary and coffee room? Now, several years later, it has become a place of growing activity in use almost every day of the week with growing concern, with a growing concern being the struggle for finding storage space for all the activities that we host. Opening its doors to support groups and recovery meetings, serving people based on our values 
without proselytizing or indoctrinating them into our spiritual practice. For we know that this that it is the best that they find us in their own way, and it is our duty to support them in their search for truth and meaning. Understanding that they these things may not be found through sitting in a pew for a Sunday sermon, but instead by discussing the impact of climate change on a Tuesday night, meeting with a grief counselor to discuss a medical diagnosis, or celebrating our feminist values and the rights of women, or our identities as members of the queer community through various activities, such as rummage sales, potlucks, pie contests, Marlene, pride proms, movie nights, projects in the garden, and the like. As some of us would say, we're, rec we're creating Unitarians, they just don't know they're Unitarians yet. <laughs> As many of you walked in today, you know sitting out front, we have a beautiful garden. This is an act of social justice taking place on our front lawn. For if we remember during the war, the victory gardens that took place in people's yards to help make up for food shortages and be self-sufficient. Ours is a mix of flowers and vegetables, but all of it's sweat equity and done by volunteers, with an effort so that people walking by can harvest fresh produce if they don't have the means to purchase it in a store, and to show people that they are valued and loved. Many of us think back and we re remember over to the side of the church house three large vegetable boxes that went unfilled with soil. And of course, the projects started that remain unfinished. Poor Neva trying to harangle Unitarians into getting things done. She has quite the task. But this summer, one of our unfinished projects decided to take its own route and produce a bountiful crop of common milkweed, a wonderful little six foot tall treat right in front of the church house on Jackson Street. It's the result of our failure to get the project initiated. Now, some would have viewed this as a nuisance and proceeded to remove the will milkweed by either physical or chemical force, we're blessed to be in an environment where we see the value in letting the milkweed grow for this season. Some may call it a weed, but we're blessed to acknowledge it as a tasty treat for the butterflies in the environment, and, and in Native American traditions, the plant is used for soup recipes, which I've never had but only heard good things about. And that brings me to today's topic of social justice. In our local community and our nation as a whole, we have weeds. Some big, some small, some with baby hands and orange hair that feel like creeping Charlies. It seems like in recent years they become mercil merciless in taking over our lives and invading our spaces. They creep through the telephone, through the newspaper, and through the television into our minds and hearts and they make us wonder what's left for us for tomorrow. <sighs> it's overwhelming at times, and it makes us wonder how do we find the energy to do the social justice work that we're doing around here. As a matter of fact, a weed just popped up in life this morning while I was on my way in to do the service. Some of you may have read Linda Halab's most recent opinion article in the Suzuki Journal, and it lists off a rant of common hot topic issues in her opinion. And in closing states, without God, evil prevails and hope is lost. Hope is what sustains us during difficult times. Linda, you and I can both agree on one thing, and that is that hope is what sustains us during difficult times. But as many of the atheists in our congregation would say, God is not the answer. The answer lays in how we live our life every day. Painting in God we trust on the walls of our public schools is not the solution. It is living our values and accepting people for, for who they are that we find the solutions to today's problems. What our communities need is for people to feel valued and their voices heard. For change in a system that benefits people calling out our elected officials for their poor behavior, voting with our beliefs at the ballot box, and continuing to show up in the world even when the going gets tough and the times are trying. 
For true religion is the life we live, not the creed we profess. You don't have to plead in God or Buddha or the Almighty to be a good person. And our congregation is proof that you can come together as a community and through your values, values create an environment where everyone is welcome regardless of their belief system and where we can change the world. That is the struggle of social justice within our community. The struggle lies in showing up day after day when the going gets tough, showing up to turn on the lights, to start the coffee pot, to unlock the front door, to let in the group, next group of individuals that are in need of our support, regardless of what they may think, who they may vote for, or what their background is. In my closing today, I'd like to steal a little bit of information from another Minnesota homeboy who I admire, and I'm gonna give it a Unitarian slant. And it's the starting line from, of a Prince song. The song is called Let's Go Crazy. Some of you may have heard of it whose title aptly applies to the action of social justice. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. This fall as a congregation, I hope that we can grow closer together in our journey and produce a bountiful harvest of the human condition, together in our joys and struggles, working through the fields ripe with weeds and Together in our joys and struggles, working through the fields ripe with weeds, and those producing the seeds of tomorrow to grow the next generation of social justice warriors. Through harvesting the weeds and putting them to use, we shall help form this world into a place that everyone can call home. For as we are reminded this morning by Frederick Douglass in our opening words, the limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those they oppress. May we come together in love during these trying times, endure, and lift up the world from oppression, and show today's tyrants that we are here to stay and have no intention of going quietly.